Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 74 of ZK Live. Tonight, we had my good friend, Nick. I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name. It's a very long group of word letters that I never can pronounce. I've never even tried to say it in my head. I just call him Nick from NWR. Uh, he's an awesome guy. We're going to bring him right on. He is. He was one of my first guests many moons ago. Oops. Hello, sir. Hey, man. How are you? What's up? Not much. How was your day? Um, it was a good day. It was productive. Tuesdays are my day in the office, so okay. maybe not my favorite day, but uh, a day that we I get a lot done. So. Okay. Tuesday's an office day, huh? Tuesday's an office day. There it is. Cool. Nice. Nick, where are you right now? I'm in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> and is that your art or your children's art? Oh, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Quality. <laughs> no, that's my kids. My kids, I let them paint on the walls because I'm going to tear all these walls out eventually anyway. So, yeah. So your kids live the life. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I'm not going to lie. It's great. So. I think everyone enjoys watching you on Instagram because <laughs> clearly just have a lot of fun. Yeah, we do. Actually, we're leaving on Friday for uh, 12 or 13 days. I'm taking them on a road trip in the truck, and we're going uh, We're going to the coast, so we're excited. So cool, man. Yeah, my daughter is so excited. I'm stoked, too, man. We're just picking all these spots to, like, stop and camp along the way, and we're going to go climbing and stuff, so it's going to be good. So how in the world are you able to do that? That's what we're going to talk about a lot tonight. So you're oh, about okay. to kick it yeah. off. How? Uh, well, um, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I have a real passion for, well, obviously hanging out with my kids, but also rock climbing. Um, and so, uh, I just, I just make it happen, man. I don't know. Like I was feeling pretty tired a few months ago. Um, and I knew we were having a lot of work coming up last month was honestly just brutal. I think I worked 70 hours a week for four or five weeks straight felt pretty tired but yeah two or three months ago I started planning it so I basically called you know we worked for probably a dozen different contractors and I started calling all the contractors two or three months ago and I said do these dates work for you and you know they all pretty much said yes because it was like two or three months out so like they can't really say no when the, when the time comes around because you've communicated it so <laughs> so yeah so it's that's it and then um we, we planned on shutting down the company completely for these two or three weeks but uh uh, I think three, three of the people want to keep going. So I booked, I booked a couple of weeks of work for them, just simple repaints. And, um, uh, yeah, so they'll keep going and, uh, really, really, um, they're, they're really great, um, employees, great people, and they'll have no problem doing stuff on their own. So, so yeah. Yeah. What does your team look like today? How, what's it made up of? Uh, of yeah, that's a good question. The team right now, we have a lot of experience on our team right now. It's the best team I've ever had. So I have one guy that's got, uh, and when I, when I tell you the years of painting, it's not like, it's not like I've been painting for 20 years, you know, like I painted my house 20 years ago. Um, these people actually have, yeah. So one guy's got, I think 21 years of experience. The other guy has 27 years of experience. And then Kyle has like nine or 10 years of experience with me alone. And then, um, myself and the two guys, the two guys that I have on kitchens right now, they're my kitchen team. They have the least amount of experience, but they're actually killing it. Like we've done, I think we've done about 10 kitchens together and uh, they've done the last two on their own. Um, I've just showed up just to oversee the finished coat go on. Um, and it's been amazing. So, so they're great. I think they've got about two years of experience each and um, yeah, but they're just great people. And Lorene who just started, she's actually upstairs right now. She's doing paperwork. <laughs> Are you still here? Yeah, she's still here. So I gave her, uh, I gave her like two big bags of papers <laughs> that I've been procrastinating on for the last three years. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so she's been doing that, and she's also learning how to paint. So she's she's been a great um, asset to the team as well. Um, so I, again, just another great great human being. So our team has really great human beings on it, um, and that's really what I'm looking for. So. Uh, experience or no experience uh, I, I don't care to have you know you know I get emails like yeah I've got 20 years of experience but you know you can't phone me because my phone's disconnected I'm like yeah no no thanks <laughs> yeah. can't handle that kind of stuff anymore so 
Wow. So the, the guys you have on cabinets, the two years experience, did it come in your company or it's two years generally? With me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what we don't... system are you using on cabinets? What system? Like coding system. Yeah, mostly like, so we have, we basically have two products that we use for cabinets. We either use the 2K polys like everyone else. That, that would be 80% of our cabinet jobs, probably maybe 70%. And then for the higher end stuff, we use, um, we use a solvent coating. Uh, I really, really love it. I encourage people to try it. I don't know why more people aren't using, but it's called Chem Life 24. Uh, it's a ChemCraft product and it is uh, a conversion varnish, but it's a, it's a bit, bit of a hybrid between a post cat and a conversion varnish. So it's a CD that has a bunch of like NC added to it. So you really feel a silkier, smoother, it looks more, more uh, regal than a, than a regular CD does. I love it. Uh, I guess technically it's not as durable, but it's like, it's right there. So um, I could care less if it's like, you know, a couple percent less durable and, and it's that much better to look at and feel. So and how really, is, really, really pretty. Yeah. What's that? How is it to apply? Oh, it's the easiest. It's so easy. Yeah. Anything, any solvent through air assisted airless is really easy. Um, and we're typically just, we're typically just doing, but like we're, we use the vinyls on, um, as our primer on all our cabinets. Um, and if we need to use anything after the vinyl, which is pretty rare, like say we're doing a set of pine cabinets and you know, it's got a lot of texture. Um, we'll do, we'll do a coat of vinyl and then we'll just start building up the water-based primer after that. Um, and we'll sand it back and then we'll do the, the 2K poly on top. But typically it's one coat of vinyl, one coat of finish, and then we're done. And that's it. And, uh, what's your go-to vinyl sealer? It's ChemCraft for sure. <clears throat> and I'll tell you, I'll tell you this as well. This is my, this is my secret, but, um, it's not really a secret, but, uh, a lot of people like the Exalta. Um, and they say it sounds like a dream. I just completely disagree. I don't know how you're getting that to sound like a dream. I might not be using the right abrasives or whatever, but uh, the ChemCraft vinyl sealer is very gummy as well, but you can catalyze it 3% with their 999 catalyst. And when you do that, it sounds like a surfacer. So it's it really is surprising. So um, we will add that catalyst. You know, it, it is a hassle because you only get the eight hour pot life with it. Um, but it makes a huge difference. So, so the vinyl, it won't build quite as much as a surfacer will, but for refinishes, it's obviously the best initial coat to put on. <laughs> Come I, on. God. I'm to have Lou, to, uh, Lou's, Lou's, text, Lou's texting me right now. Of course he is. Don't worry. I won't give it, I won't give it all away, Lou. Oh man. He, that guy, <laughs> he holds on tight. He's one, of, he's one of my best friends, man. I know. He's, he's amazing. <laughs> It was I, his birthday yesterday. What's that? It was his birthday yesterday. Oh my gosh. He's, you know, probably, he's probably my best friend that I've never met. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I, I really enjoy Lou from pen painting. Yeah, uh, me too. Me you too. know, whenever I'm driving, I make the phone call. What's up, man? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, anyway, the, a lot of people are using vinyl. Like, that's no secret at all. Um, and uh, I don't want to tell people that my favorite vinyl sealer is ChemCraft and then go use it and have their sandpaper gum up. So I'm just going to be honest and say that we catalyze it. Um, the difference for me was one piece of sandpaper per door to two pieces of sandpaper per 50 doors. That was the difference, <laughs> that was the difference with 3% catalyst. So that's, that's amazing. Now, is that something they recommended to you or you just tried it yourself? Or yeah, I talked to my distributor and I said, look, like I'm having problems with like everybody keeps saying these vinyls sand so well. And I just, I couldn't get them to sand well. So, cause I always used to use, um, he said, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we're spilling all the beans tonight. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, I just called the, and he's like, oh, maybe you should try the catalyst. Cause it's like he was like oh really that's surprising it sands well but you know when you're doing samples in a shop and you like sand like four square and she's like it's not the same so um so he said try it and i tried it and i was blown away so yeah that's amazing mm -hmm. so you guys are chem is chemcraft is that a canadian brand well they're owned by um uh axel nobel now so it's a, like uh obviously like a they used to be quite a high-end um, coat, like ChemCraft never used to actually be a high-end coating, but ever since Axel Nobel bought them out, like 
you know, Becker's was made by Axel Nobel and all these higher end companies. So I've noticed like Chemcraft theory, apparently has the, um, the most durable pre-cut on the market right now. And we use it all the time and I'm very happy with it. It's great. Um, it's a very simple, uh, simple system to use. Like all of their, their catalyst is like universal with all their products. So it's the same catalyst that catalyzes the vinyl as it does the Chemlife 24, as it does the post-cut, as it does the pre-cut. Like you can catalyze the pre-cut 3% as well if you want, and that gives it extra durability and all these things. So that's awesome. And it's all eight hours. Like it, the math is really simple, so it doesn't confuse the team too much. We don't have to grab all these different containers. It's just one, we try and keep things really streamlined and simple. Um, the, actually, the Chemlife 24 that I was talking about, one of the reasons I u liked using it is because it's a 24 hour CD, which is unique. Usually they're eight hours. But you have to use a special catalyst to make it 24 hours. But again, that's confusing, right? So I just say, well, let's just, let's just deal with the eight hour situation and use that one catalyst. And we catalyze it at, yeah, whatever percentage it is, it's 8%. And then uh, we keep it simple like that. And you're most often you're doing a one coat of primer, one, one vinyl sealer, one top coat. That's right. That's yeah. awesome. So we do, we, we set up the, the Festool inspection lights, one on each side of the door and then right at the right height. And then that way you can do all your preliminary filling and stuff. And it's very rare after the first coat of vinyl that we'll need anything. Um, but if we do, it's pretty minor and it'll be small and the finished coat will just cover it anyway. Um, yep. if, if it's big, we'll spot prime it, but it's pretty rare. Yeah, uh, that's, that is one of the things that we're going to be talking about. That, that's one of the answers to the question I'm going to ask. That my big question tonight is how the heck are you so efficient? I think, Nick, you run one of the most efficient painting companies I've ever seen. And the information I know about you guys, like when you go to work and work eight hours, what gets done in that eight hours, I would put up against anybody else in the country. Oh, thanks. Or in North America, because you're in a different country. That's fine. Um, and so I want to sort of dive into how that happens. Um, and, and maybe why? Well, why does it happen first? I think those <laughs> are probably simpler. Because I um, want to spend my time on the job, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want to go climbing. <laughs> you want to rock climbing. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just the quality of life thing, right? And I want that for my team as well. So, Really, my goal with our company is uh, um, physically, mentally, and financially sustainable here. So I keep trying to, we, we have the highest wages in the town for painters, um, and I like to keep it that way. And I want to keep them going up as well. So the only way they're going to go up is if everybody's more efficient. And it's really, really simple things a lot of the time. Like it's not, you know, if you go out to your car, and if you don't take something with you, then I'll be pissed, you know, like, Something that doesn't need to be on the site anymore, you know, like those types of things, like just, you know, it's, it's hard because like your brain has to always be working, but you're at work anyway. So, you know, that's what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so the impetus is more free time and you have more free time. You take more time off from work than any painter I know. Maybe. Um, and again, that, I think that's, that's <clears throat> very impressive because you make a great living and, your company provides a great living for a number of people while you manage to not work while taking extended periods of time off. Right. Which is not necessarily standard in our industry. No, um, it's very, it's really hard to do for sure. Um, and you know, sometimes, and like this, you know, I learned a lot of this from, from you guys as well with like uh, Instagram as well. Like this is, this is one of the things that helps our job security. Um, so I feel comfortable, like we did a kitchen a week for the last few months, um, and I feel comfortable telling people that we're no longer doing kitchens anymore because it's summer and I'm going climbing, and I don't have the time to oversee them. And, my, and the, the other guy that does the kitchens, he's a climber too, and you know he's taking lots of time off. So we're booking kitchens for November, and I know that we'll be booking them. So we've already started. So, But that comes from... Flex. What's that? It's such a flex. I love it. Well, it comes from marketing, right? And, and just being like professional. So um, if you make yourself, yeah, it's, it's like you're doing a great job, right? Like if you, if you make yourself in demand, then you'll feel more comfortable. But I, I haven't always felt that way. <clears throat> like I used to feel very insecure about doing it. And I'd, I'd take lots of time off and I'd be nervous about coming back. And sometimes it was really hard. Um, but now I'm just, it's con I'm constantly learning. I'm getting better, you know, like 
I've switched my kitchens to exterior jobs. So now we have, I think, 15, 15 new houses to do from now till the new year. Like that's new construction interior stuff. And those are super hard to schedule. So then you throw a bit of exterior in there. And those are easy because you can push those months to start. Like you can push the months in every direction. Nobody cares really you, most of the time. So it becomes like a more flexible way of running your company. And then, yeah. And so that's what you're doing with kitchens as well, you're saying? What's that? Are, are you saying that you're moving kitchens around like you move exteriors around? No, I'm saying I can't move kitchens around. Yes, yes, and, yes. And that's, okay. why we're not, that's why we're not doing them for the summer. I see, I see. So the summer is when I like to take most of my time off. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'll still be working, but I'll probably only work for like three hours in the morning and then I'll go climbing for the rest of the day. And I'll probably do that most of the time for probably a couple months. And then, uh, and then, yeah, as soon as it starts snowing again in the fall, I'll be right back, like the switch will turn and I'll be right back into like, do whatever I, you know, take on whatever I can. So for those people who don't know, can you just give me like a background of how your company got to here, how you kind of got started and how you were able to tell people I'm not doing kitchens right now? Cause you can't do that. If you're a two year old company, it's going to be pretty tough to tell clients, <clears throat> be able to go, Hey, here's what I'll do in kitchen and here's when I won't sure yeah okay um <clears throat> okay so <laughs> I started I started my company 21 years ago my dad was a painter for 48 years he just retired um he, had, he was a kitchen finisher actually as well and uh, uh basically I, I worked I worked like six months of the year very hard and a lot of hours and then I'd take take time off and then I do I keep doing that but I would just come back and do repaints mostly so it wasn't it wasn't too stressful um, and I didn't have a family and I didn't have, I, I lived in a van for probably 12 years. Um, so that's how I saved up a lot of money to buy a house and stuff like that. I ran a company out of a van and a storage locker. Um, yeah. And then I had kids and started mar like branding and being a little more marketing conscious. Um, so now it definitely feels like I have something on my shoulders. That's for sure. Like when I go away for two weeks, like it's not going to feel like it used to be when I'd hit the road and go to the States and like the, everything was gone. So now I still have a company. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that feeling will ever come back. Maybe if I sell a company one day, but for now I'm just learning how to deal with it better. Um, and so what, what I'm trying to get at here is if, if you're a two year old company, I think what you should strive for is making yourself like, like anybody can do good work. Okay. Anybody can deliver a flawless finish. Okay. I can perform brain surgery if someone gave me 20 years to do it they'd probably die, but I could still do it. Okay. Like if you go into someone's house and you're super fast and super clean and, and like, it's like not too physically demanding or mentally demanding on you, then your clients are going to be so impressed and you're going to be in high demand. So basically I'm trying to come up with like, like we, like I'm telling you, man, we spray vinyl sealer in people's living rooms every week and they're sitting there watching TV. It's no joke. And like, they can't smell anything. So it's, we've come up with these great ways of doing things. And, um, you know, as part of our reviews, like people can't believe it. And they're like, yeah, it's great. They're doing our, our kitchen in the living room. And uh, so we're just trying to create a way to make ourselves in demand. Yeah. And, and that's, how did you learn how to do that? Did that just come naturally or was it a lot of pain? <laughs> no, it was mostly, it was mostly, uh, so my dad was a kitchen finisher and, you know, he, he still does the, or he did the best work I've still seen to date. You know, it was classic, like, pre-catalyzed through a conventional gun, many coats, like very tight, tight to the wood coatings, like beautiful stuff. And it's not like what you see today. Um, but uh, he basically told me I'd never be able to finish kitchens on site. So then all of a sudden I was like, okay, well, whatever, game on. <laughs> so I guess I have him to thank for it. <laughs> it's funny what happens when we put, when our backs up against the wall or, or we, you know, that pressure comes in, you're like, watch what I can do. Totally, totally. He's like, you got to get a shop and you got to get this. And I was like, I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with where we live, but it's like the Boulder, Colorado of the U.S. And, you know, we just we just started a climbing gym here and, you know, our overhead's 15 grand a month. So it's for 2000 square feet. It's, it's very expensive here. So. So I don't and, want a shop. I don't yeah. want a shop. <laughs> Hence not having a shop. Yeah. So. Somebody asked, uh, assuming you have a bookkeeper and an office manager. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you have what, six employees? 
right now we have, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six and myself, so seven, seven of us. Seven painters. Yeah. And how do you, who does your books? Uh, like my accountant. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, so I guess I have a bookkeeper, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so she has, like, my credit card. Basically, it's all just credit card. Everything's credit card, and she just keeps track of everything. And my taxes are always paid before, you know, I make the installments and like taxes are now, but I'm already paid because I paid throughout the year, that kind of thing. So yeah. it's, all, it's all fairly organized that way. And all I do is I just do estimates and invoice. That's all I do. <clears throat> That's awesome. And would you say that your average job size is fairly large? Mm, yeah, I'd say right now, they're pr yeah, probably, probably around 15 grand, 10 to 15 grand. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, that's maybe not large talking to you but it's large in a general for, scope i think for for a residential <laughs> repainter or just a, an average paint contractor residential i would say yeah. that's fairly large yeah right yeah i think so like i mean this week what did we do we did a kitchen we did uh another fifteen thousand dollar job and another i'm doing a five thousand dollar fireplace so we'll probably build like thirty thousand dollars this week <clears throat> i think yeah so and then you mix in some of your new construction, which are larger projects generally? They are, yeah. So we're, <clears throat> we just do a, a base rate of $10 a square foot for new construction. So generally, if it's a 4,000 square foot house, it's $40,000. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> yeah. we, we need to team up. You, if, <laughs> if, if, we, you, if I had your efficiency, man, <clears throat> is we can sell jobs for good, great prices, but... I'm sure, I have, I'm sure. I have <clears throat> yeah. not gotten nearly as efficient as you are yet. We're working on it though. Well, and I don't understand, like, you know, like I get, we have people from Calgary coming in and doing new construction for $3 a square foot and I can't wrap my head around it. I'm like, I can't afford to buy the paint really for that. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't, well, those two things can't even be compared, right? What they're doing yeah. and what you're doing. I don't think, you know, some, it's someone that's working by themselves, maybe, happy making 25 bucks an hour, happy not paying their taxes. I, maybe it's like that type of deal. And then they see the number of like, you know, 13 grand to paint a $4,000 house. They're like, wow, 13 grand. It's like, that actually goes nowhere in business right now. Like <laughs> nowhere. So yeah, if you're, if you're a legit company, yeah, you really need to make sure that um, we need to make $65 an hour as a business for, per, per person. Um, and then for kitchens, I try a hundred and for plaster, I try a hundred to 150. Cause that's usually myself. So, yeah. That's awesome. So you guys with the new constructions that, that would then even make your average job size even higher. So my, and what I'm getting at is then you're not going and doing constantly setting up and breaking down and setting up and breaking down. You're, you're, you at least have a little time on each job. So you don't have to, yeah. do your people, like, do you have work vans or do you people transport the stuff themselves? How do you move stuff from job to job? So right now we only have uh, my truck and another work van and that's Kyle's. So he takes everything. Um, basically, uh, everybody sort of agreed that they're okay. Like just taking like one sustainer full of hand tools in their car. But I'm getting another vehicle because it's just becoming too much. So um, I'm just getting another van. So that's I've been basically one vehicle per two people is ideal i think yeah so and i'm and i'm not there yet and i just like i'd buy one tomorrow i just haven't had time to sit down and like look for one um so so yeah i'm trying to buy another van and these guys are not making it easy and i'm like i'm trying to buy this vehicle from you you haven't done anything except for just sell it to me and you won't call me back what the heck <laughs> that sucks that sucks and I've been trying, I've, I've had a van for a month that's still, will be registered on Friday, finally. But the DMV is tough. Yeah. I'm, um, glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad Josh agrees with me. 10 bucks a square is right. Yes, yeah. Is I tell GCs now that we don't want to for $20 a square foot. Um, yeah. It, yeah, and it depends. Like we've we've done houses for thirty and forty dollars a square foot, but you know we've we've uh, done plaster throughout those houses. Or there's like, but I'm ten dollars a square foot is like a, a one by four casing. That's my my point to that is like right now we have so much demand for what we do that yeah. I have a competitive advantage at the twenty to forty dollars square foot. 
range. And at the 10 to $15 square foot range, there's probably 10 companies in Boston yeah. that could do that just fine. Yeah. And I'm like, honestly, I'm not special at the 10 to $15 a square foot price. But I can offer you something above that that is actually special. Yeah. And so that's where I, I just have decided to start saying no ahead of time if they don't think they want to spend more than 15. Okay, yeah. Just, just because I've bandwidth. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, makes sense. But you guys produce work so fast that <laughs> it doesn't really matter what you're doing. I don't know if we're that fast. I mean, I, I think we're efficient, but um, yeah. Yeah. I think that you're, let's talk about, let's talk some more about your efficiencies. Where, where else do you find efficiencies? Okay. So, um, you mind if I just send a text real quick? Yeah. Oh, is that okay? Sorry. That's fine. I'll sit here and juggle for everybody. I'm juggling, um, for all you listening. I'm not actually juggling. Um, for anyone who is listening, because I can't jump. But um, no, you there? I'm here. It's loading back up. Oh, okay. Want... Sorry. Go on. Yeah. Well, it wants to load back up. There oh. it is. Okay. Boom. Sorry. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think. I've done a lot over the, like, I mean, I've always been the type of person to stay up, you know, late at night Googling products and finishes and doing research. And I've done a lot of R&D, let's put it that way. Um, and I basically try and eliminate all redundant steps. I'll, I'll make it, I'll give you a good example. I posted a video not too long ago of, of us uh, sealing up some oak doors, white oak doors. Um, Hi. We just had like a round Merca sander and a square Merca sander and Kyle and I were sanding them and, and sealing them. And, you know, it took probably an hour to do 35 doors, sanding and sanding. And, um, and then I got some comments saying, oh, you don't blow them off or you don't vacuum them. Well, no, I don't on the sealer coat. Um, we sand them with the dustless sanders and then we seal them. And so what I've done is like, you know, like I'll do like high definition photos of things. So I, I do a high definition photo of a door that, you know, we've vacuumed the, the dustless sanding coat off before the sealer and, a, and one where we didn't. And there's absolutely no difference whatsoever. <laughs> so there's no reason to, you know, of course you're going to blow, blow it off before the finished coat, but there's absolutely no difference in grain definition. There's no grain difference in finish quality. There's no difference in anything. So the dustless sanding takes care of the sealer coat and, and we just spray it and you know you've got an air assisted air list there's some air it might blow off the odd thing or whatever as you go but you're going to sand that anyway so you come back and sand it again and then you blow it off and then you spray um so yeah. that's so, what i love about nick because <laughs> yes i watched that video and i my initial reaction was oh my god he didn't clean off the floor like the doors are dirty and he sprayed them right right and at the end of the day, but I didn't question it. I never would because I, I know you now. And I know, like, you know something I don't know. Well, what, I mean, there's, there's, not, there's nothing easier than, than clear coating white oak. That's the easiest thing you could possibly do in the finishing industry. A coat of seal or a coat of finish. Like, you, you, honestly, I vinyled those and I was like, maybe we should just leave them. They look so good. <laughs> but obviously we didn't. Um, but it's very, yeah, there's no, there's no difference. Um, and if it was something else that needed that, then I would. Um, I do what is necessary and I don't compromise quality ever. So. I know that. And, and that's why it was awesome watching you spray, do that process because I learned something. Right. And it changed the way I thought because if, and I think this is a good point for a lot of people on social media. It's like, <laughs> let's just assume that this person who made this video and posted this thing knows more about what's happening in this video than me sitting on my couch right right like just because yeah you it, like my first reaction was like holy crap they're not vacuuming these doors yeah and then i was like well it's nick i know that he knows more than me in this situation and obviously they there's something going on here right but it was awesome to hear you clear clear that up but the the real point here is you did how many doors in an hour or two hours of man two man hours 
27. 27 doors in two man hours. Mm -hmm. That is like, that is something, man. Yeah, we were, we were moving. Like, you, you have to put the door deckers on them. So that took a few hours. And then once the door deckers are on them, yeah, we sanded, yeah, we sanded them and sealed them. And then the, the next session was the exact same amount of time because I had the sander in my hand and I had the blow gun in my hand at the same time. So when both of us were done sanding, I'd blow and he'd spray. And then we finished them. I, I'm going to post the video. It was two minutes and 24 seconds per door, both sides. Yes. So it's, it's those kinds of things that inspire me to up my game and question, you know, what is... What do I need to do, and what am I doing that's that's pointless or a waste of time? Uh, if it's getting the same finish, what do I care? Right? Mm -hmm. It's not about well, this is how it should be. It's like, well, what works? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It seems to me that you spent a lot of time figuring out what works. Yeah, the R and D has been huge, and our our new construction has been a challenge. But now we have a system for for like our door frames that we can make we can make our door frames look almost like a cabinet grade finish in a very short amount of time and that's that's something that's really cool for us because we can still be competitive with prices but deliver like 10 times the product that most companies are that's so how how would you do that would you share uh, yeah basically, like rule of thumb is like don't ever i don't care what anybody says about the water-based finishes like you don't touch bare wood or mdf with water-based it just doesn't work unless you're willing to wait overnight for it to dry, which I am not. So, um, and it, it's needs that some, and then they say, oh yeah, add the catalyst. And then all of a sudden you're spraying isocyanates everywhere and whatever. But, um, so basically we spray, we spray uh, the vinyl uh, uncatalyzed. We don't catalyze it for the, for the door frames or doors because you don't need to sand it. So we just see it like we do our filling and caulking and all that sand. And then we spray the vinyl on everything. We usually do that on a Friday evening if we can. It's like one person, one and a half hours to do a whole house and then they leave and you come back on Monday and there's really no smell left. And then we just start, uh, there's like a red, a red glazing putty inspection process there. And we do that with LEDs perpendicular to the surface so that we don't miss a thing. Um, and you usually do that in the darkness. Um, if, you, if you do it in the light, then you're just wasting your time really. Um, so if you do it in the darkness, you will see everything. Um, and then just start building up the primer after that. Build it up three coats probably, but three coats is like you're talking five hours of spraying for a whole house. Uh, and then after that comes the final sanding, which takes a long time. So you go with your Mercus, like I was saying, Mercus sanders or whatever, and you sand while inspecting at the same time. And then you've basically got this perfect door frame and then one finished coat and you're done. Yeah. Boom. So it's good, yeah. Yeah, Kyle's been our door frame guy, and he's just been like, I like, I was in putting the door frame protectors on it the other day, and I was like touching them, and I was like, holy fuck, man! Like, I couldn't do this. Like, he's awesome. <laughs> like, he's fast too. Like, I'm like, wow, it's crazy. So, that's good. Yeah. So, how did you these relationships that you have with DCs? How did they come about? How did you start working in the new construction world? Oh, I started a long time ago, a long time ago, and this is a pretty small town. There's only like 12, 13,000 people that live here. Um, so you pretty much know of all the contractors in town um, and you, whether you work for them or not, that you just kind of take your turn. But we've been working for most of them lately. Um, and I think it's because we're delivering a good product quickly and we, we stay on schedule. Like we're just like, if you're like, if you're just a normal person that shows up on time and does a good job quickly, like you're, you can get everything you want. <laughs> it's crazy. So yeah. true. It's so not hard these days. <laughs> yeah. it, it's the easiest market in the world to be good today. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. So yeah, we're, we're feel very fortunate for all uh, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah I, I think that too often people are focused on painting and not on all the other things. The yeah. the entire experience for the buyer, whether it's the GC or the client. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said before, anybody can do a good job painting. Anybody. So that that's something I, I you don't hear that too often. Mm -hmm. But it's 100% true. Give me mm -hmm. enough time. Like you said, give me 20 years, I'll, I'll perform brain surgery. Sure. Yeah. Totally. But how do we do it quickly and efficiently? And 
That that's awesome. So when you find how do how are you finding your people? Uh, the staff. Um, I put your ads in the newspaper. <laughs> yeah, and and word of mouth, word of mouth. So you know, like I started climbing with one of the guys, and he just seems like a good kid, and he was a maintenance guy at a hotel, and I was just like, well, have you ever thought about painting? Like, you seem like a good fit for our culture. Um, you know, he likes doing videos, and he likes, he likes, uh, yeah, people really like him, and every everybody, people really, everybody on our, on our team, everybody really gets along with. So, um, I find it more important to just have a good good team of people that fit into the culture of your company than, than anything. Any, you can train anybody, right? If they're a decent human, you can train anybody on the tools. You can't train people to like show up on time and you can't train them to like deal with clients really well. And you can't train them to be part of a team and communicate with each other. Um, we have a WhatsApp group uh, for NWR painting and everybody's just on there all the time. Hey, have you seen this rare? Have you seen this? Have you seen that? And it's great. Like people are just, it's, it's awesome. So it feels like a good team. So what other things do you do to be efficient? What other things do I do to be efficient? Um, I mean, I guess, I guess I plan a lot. I plan a lot of stuff in my head and on paper and on my phone. Um, I have two lists. One is on my phone and one is on paper and they're both the same, but um, <laughs> I need two of them <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> so, because uh, sometimes I just don't look at my phone and sometimes I just don't look at the notepad. Um, but I think that that's, so, I mean, in, technically that's working, right? So if I'm at home and I'm thinking about work, technically that's working. So, you know, maybe I'm not off as much as I think I'm off, but like the time that's, that I'm at work is very efficient. Um, and, um, other ways to be efficient. I don't know, just trying to, like, I can be as efficient as I can, but if I have six other people that aren't efficient, like that doesn't help anything. So I'm trying to train all those people to think like I do as well. And uh, Kyle's there, he's been, you know, 10, 10 years with me or whatever. And so he's helping the rest of the team think like that as well. So yeah, like, you know, if you're, if you leave a job one night and you got to go to another job the next day, like don't just leave all your shit there. So you got to go back there and pick it up on your way to there the next day, like be, be prepared <clears throat> um, for those types of things. Um, like, you know, to do a kitchen, there's a lot of things you need. And that's why we have a trailer. We roll up, it's a kitchen trailer and it's fully stocked. And the guys know to keep it stocked. You know, if you're out of a measuring cup and you got to go to the paint store, you just lost an hour or half an hour. So, yeah. so yeah, we try and be efficient with that sort of stuff. Have, have like the van is always stocked. The truck is always stocked with everything that you could always need. Um, and, uh, yeah. No, I, I think I, I love what you said. I think it's more it's it more painters could think about what they're gonna be doing more. Like I we talk about it a lot here and, and that's one of the things that makes us good is is all the time we spend thinking about how we're gonna go do what we're gonna go do. Mm -hmm. And not just showing up and doing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, planning is good. And I'll say another thing, like one of the biggest things that I've noticed in my business, uh, one, probably the most important tool as a painter is lighting. And so we have a lot of lighting and every employee has a rechargeable high powered headlamp that's 1800 lumens, which is a lot of light. Um, this guy in Revelstoke makes the lightest, most powerful headlamps in North America. And so I ordered a bunch and they are awesome. So every, every night, everybody has to show up with their high powered headlamp recharged. And that really saves us time because we don't really go back for touch-ups very often. Like we have, we've gone back for so few touch-ups. Like we just finished a 6,000 square foot duplex and I, like I called him and I was like, okay, so we'll be there Thursday to do our deficiency list. And he's like, yeah, it's not too bad. There's like four items. I was like, fuck, that's amazing, you know? And it's just, just damages from putting up a light. Like it's not even our stuff. So it's fantastic. And I really owe that all to lighting. Do you know what the name of that headlamp is? Yeah, it's called, um, what's the guy? Oh, yeah, I gra I'll grab it. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I highly recommend these because I've gone through a bunch of different headlamps. Uh, this is called Lynx, Lynx OGT. And if you Google them, 
it's a guy in Revelstoke, or sorry, he's in Nelson, Canada. And if you know Nelson, it's kind of like a hippie pot smoking town. So this guy might, might not get back to you very quickly. <laughs> but um, we got seven of these. I think they're about 200 bucks Canadian each. Um, and they're uh, waterproof and stuff like that. So they're good for construction sites. And they, uh, they're adjustable from like 400 to 2,000. And anyway, they're really good. So at like 1,000 lumens, they'll last you an eight-hour day. And if you need 2,000 lumens, that'll last you four hours. So if you get them, I would just get an extra battery for each one in case you need 2,000 lumens of light a day. But if you're doing 2,000, like you don't even need a light. And you could be in the middle of winter and you could do anything. Like, um, you know, we, when I'm sanding ceilings, like uh, flat sanding ceilings, sometimes I use it if I don't have a, a light sticking up perpendicular to the ceiling and stuff. Um, so headlamps are a huge thing for us. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Any other things that you do that are, you think are, help you be efficient? Um, well, I don't use fine paints. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I, I would honestly love to, but it just, yeah, I tried for so long and it's just too, that's why we use the industrial products so much. Cause like when we do cabinets, we do cabinets, we do front and backs of cabinets from primer to finish in a day. So like we, we, we mask and we set up on a Monday, we sand and clean, we clean and sand on a Tuesday, and then we spray everything on the Wednesday and we install on the Thursday. So there's only one day of spraying in someone's house and that's the whole kitchen. Primer, finish, everything. Because the vinyl, the vinyl dries in five to 10 minutes. Like by the time you spray the back of the vinyl, you've flipped it already and sprayed the front. And then, and then you can flip it again already and you can finish coat the back. And the back is the 2K poly. So you finish coat that and then you wait three hours or whatever, and then you can flip that and finish the front and then you're out of there. <clears throat> What's your sanding schedule on, on that system? So, so usually, so like we'll sand, you mean like from start to finish? Yeah. So it depends on what we're sanding, but generally it's 180. We'll sand with 180, uh, the cabinet doors and most of the time, in all honesty, we don't clean them because the sanding will take care of it. Like, it's a pretty aggressive sand. Um, if it's like those old gold oak cabinets that are old, like, you know, we'll take some toothbrushes and the cleaner to the profiles and stuff. <clears throat> but if it's a shaker door, usually the sanding, we don't need to clean them. So we'll skip that step. That's another, like, efficiency thing. Um, the sanding just takes care of it. Like, if there's grime and stuff on the bottom of the door like you don't need to clean it you just run the sander over it just rips it right off like almost a bare wood right and you can tell it's totally clean there's nothing there so that saves a bit of time there um and then we spray the vinyl um and the fronts get a pretty good coat of vinyl like a pretty good catalyzed coat of vinyl the backs don't really get sanded too much um we just i just don't recommend it to people i'm like you're never going to see these like we're just going to give them a sand we'll give them a coat of vinyl and a coat of finish and they're going to look a thousand times better than they do now uh, and we'll fix some major stuff but we're not going to inspect them like crazy so um and the fronts like all of our attention goes to the fronts <clears throat> yep so you spray your vinyl sealer on 180 sanded wood are you yep. hand sanding all all the profiles all the details oh for sure yeah if, if there are profiles definitely yep everything gets sanded <clears throat> definitely do you have a but favorite I'll... what's that do you have a favorite kind of sandpaper? Um, well, yeah, I mean, we use the Abernet um, just because uh, we use Marcus Sanders. Um, 3M has come out with a sandpaper called Cubitron. Have you used it? Yeah. It's remarkable. Um, it is. I don't notice a huge difference on the Cubitron <clears throat> with between the, the Merca and the Cubitron on vinyl or on, well, we never really sand the poly anyway, but on the vinyl. Um, or on bare wood, but I did notice a massive difference on, on oil paint, on fine paints. So Cubitron sanded fine paints three times faster and three times longer than Abernet. Yeah. But I don't notice a huge <laughs> difference. What's that? Abernet does not like the oil. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, but for the industrial coatings, I haven't noticed a huge difference. And um, I'm still kind of, that, I'm, that's it, like an R&D stage for me, actually. So we have some Cubitron in our sustainers and I keep asking the guys like, tell me what you think and blah, blah, blah. I haven't actually done the comparison myself, but that's, that's another efficiency thing that I'd like to dial in better is making sure we have the right sandpaper 
to make it the fastest and longest lasting possible. So, so the Cubitron's pretty aggressive though. So if you are standing with 320 and you're gonna finish coat with like a 30 degree or something, you gotta be careful for seeing the scratches. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So 180, final sealer. Yeah, then 320. Then 320. Mm -hmm. Do you sand the backs and the fronts? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The, the back, the back of the door with 320, like a back of a shaker cabinet door would take five seconds to sand because you're just going done. That's it. So you're just sanding. You're just like creating a little bit of tooth on the vinyl, and you don't even need to really, but we just do it. Um, I just don't want anything to fail. Um, then do you hand sand your edge? The edges? Like the, the edges of the door? Yep. Yeah. yeah, so you just run a block, you scratch the outside, like scratch the edge. We power sand the edges with the, like the initial step. So you take the mercury and power sand the edge, but then when you sand the vinyl, like you don't want to burn through the vinyl. Yeah. That's, that's another thing is like we do, we, um, we have spray, spray bombs that we load up with the vinyl. So when we're done with the vinyl, the sprayer gets put away and it gets, and then it gets taken out of the house. So there's like none of that vinyl smell left in the area and then if somehow we do burn through a little bit we have spray cans that we loaded up with vinyl and so we'll just do a quick spot prime but it's pretty rare um, because i really don't like the 2k poly touching anything that's not vinyl sealed yeah it, it, it'll show it'll show uh, especially on those, those edges it just swells it differently like i mean the, the average person wouldn't care but i drive me crazy yeah. yeah what are you spraying your vinyl sealer with uh, the ED655. Yeah. We and were spraying it with the, um, that's another good efficiency thing. We were spraying it with the uh, uh, Merker pump, the air assisted airless. Because I think that uh, those spray sol solvent based coating better than any other sprayer. Um, but we figured out a way to spray the vinyl very, very well with the ED655, but I can't tell you all that. <laughs> Lou would kill me. <laughs> My next question was what tips, because a hundred people are going to ask what tips. Uh, uh, <laughs> you can just, you can message me if you want. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's uh, fair. But yeah. You're not adding air to that equation. Uh, not right now. Nope. Nope. Okay. Okay. No, and it's been, yeah. So and that, that makes life, that makes life a lot more simple too, right? Because you don't have to. I mean, we always have air on our kitchens because like we don't, like, we don't like vacuuming. Vacuuming creates static electricity and, and you get more shit in your stuff. So we always blow things off right in front of the booth and we get, we get the most dust free finishes that way. And you also can just like get in the corners better. It's just more professional, right? <clears throat> yeah. So we fire up the gas compressor and just blow things off always. Um, and then when we're doing our Chem Life 24 kitchens, we need the compressor for the air assisted airless pumps. Or if we're spraying like spray stain, like we did that stained kitchen, we toned that kitchen island and did a black glaze and all that. Um, you need a big compressor for that stuff. So when you're spraying your cap, you're using a Merker and a Kremlin gun, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Very easy to spray, yeah. Especially the clear, like the clear is just so easy. <laughs> you think you're like, you're like, you're like, you feel like a god when you're spraying. You're like, wow, I'm so good. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So when you're when you're spraying the 2K water based stuff, yeah, is that air assisted or, or air airless? Airless. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, it's better. Yeah, it's better. I mean, it might not necessarily be better, but I think the from what I've seen and heard, like the guys spraying with the the air assisted airless, they're spraying with enough fluid pressure and so little air pressure, it might as well be an airless. Yep. Uh, so that's my opinion, but. Do you have a preferred uh, water-based 2K? We use ICA coatings. I haven't really tried m many other ones. I tried Envirolac, um, wasn't too thrilled to be honest. Um, the ICA, I really like, I think it's nice. They have good primers, um, <clears throat> good products, but most of all, I have a really, really knowledgeable and uh, uh, good distributor. So if you have that and it's readily accessible, um, I could easily be using Renner right now or I could easily be using Malaysia or Elva, but they're just not easily accessible to me. And I don't think, you know, that that's, that's not as important. 
like we deliver a good finish with the ICA. It looks great. So I, I think that's the biggest deciding factor for those coatings is like, do you have, is it readily available and do you have great customer service and a knowledgeable rep? Yeah. No. Totally. It's all kind of pretty much the same. They kind of are. Well, I mean, it's almost like the TDS was like copy pasted. Yeah. <laughs> like you look at it and like, you're like, really? <laughs> like, it's like wallpaper companies now. <laughs> same thing. Every install instruction is like the exact same. You're like, okay, it's copy paste. Yeah. There's just, there's just one giant factory in Italy producing like five brands of, of 2K poly. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> um, yeah. So airless there so have you moved away from your pressure pots uh yeah except for for uh spray stain <clears throat> yeah so we we toned that island the other day um and we use pressure pots for that and and for glazing you know you've got i mean it's mostly cup guns to be honest i've got like five set of cup guns and they're they're really the go-to's but um for an island or places you have like if you're spray stain you really want dexterity if I had to spray stain a bunch of cabinet doors and they were on the turntable, I'd just be using the cup gun. But if I have to do an island and stuff like that, I'm gonna use a pressure pot or a railing or something like that. Cause I don't think the cup gun's really gonna do it. Yeah. As well. Yeah. But it's pretty rare, man. I, I busted out the pressure pot two weeks ago and that was the first time in like over a year. I got a bunch for sale if anybody wants some. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have one too. Yeah, I mean, totally. my have been just sitting yeah yeah so but they are useful once in a while so yeah what's your favorite soda gun uh the one with my dog on it and my kids yeah <laughs> <laughs> didn't you get that right before they stopped selling them yep. yeah yeah I, yeah I wanted to get a custom dk one yeah and they were like at the time, they like did not do it anymore. Yeah, he, I called him and he's like, "I think they've stopped." And I was like, "Just see what you can do, man." Like, I'll... so anyway, they did it, which was awesome. It's a five thousand, and it's a great gun. Yeah, yeah. four thousand, five thousand—they're all really great guns. I would, I would spray anything through any of them. Um, if I'm gonna do the two K solvent high gloss, I'll use the five thousand. I think it's maybe maybe it has a little bit more of an edge, but. Yeah. I haven't used the 5500, so I can't speak for that. Are you using the RPS cups, the PPS cups, the just regular metal cup? Yeah, the PPS2. PPS2. The new one, yeah. So I like it because you can measure on the side of the thing, so there's less waste, Yeah. less in containers. Um, the lids are a bit more wasteful, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I really like that system. And there's a big hole on the top, so that's my pressure feed if I need it. If I'm spraying 2K through there, water <laughs> I, I told you that. It's really good. <laughs> it works. I saved yourself $550 in a pressure cup for SADA. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty rare we have to redo a door, but if we have to redo it, then uh, that's how we do it. Yeah. That's how we do touch-ups too, but I, yeah. <laughs> I went and bought the uh, – the pressure, I love, I, to, to be fair, I absolutely love the pressure cup from Sada. I'm sure, I'm sure, yeah. I'm, yeah, I might get one one day, yeah. It, it's, it's a dream. Uh, I actually just got a second one the other day. Um, it must could, be quite a unique feeling to have it through a cup gun. Yeah, it, you're spraying, I sprayed Eco Primer through a 1.3, no sweat. <laughs> That's insane, yeah. It's insane. You know, you stick the, the, the sticks in it, it's vertical. And when you do the stir stick, you put mud into a cup. Yeah. And then, you know, it sprays it great. Totally, yeah. You know, with 10 PSI of fluid. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. One sec. I'm just going to. That's a beautiful painting. His children have serious talent. If you guys are not watching this and listening, you're missing out on some unbelievable artwork in the background. Yeah, it's so good. What green tape on the light for? Oh, it's broken, and my son likes to put stuff in there. <laughs> Safety feature. That's frog tape. That's a new ad for frog tape. It is frog tape. It's, it's either that or Phoenixa. We only use two types of tape, one-and-a-half-inch frog tape and one-and-a-half-inch Phoenixa. 
and those are the only two tapes we use. I love it. We only use two tapes as well. Yeah. So. Um. What else? What else are we doing for efficiencies that you think is unique? I don't know. Um, I think someone mentioned being organized. That helps having all the sustainers. Um, all the lights like in bags you know i can bring like six lights over my shoulders into a house at once now instead of like you know the old halogens like you're like that's yeah, so stri streamline streamline tools is good um one thing that i would like to improve on for efficiency is uh i can't stand the fact that the dust extractors that we use don't have like like extra bag storage and better hose and tool storage <clears throat> so like the Merca dust extractors are fantastic, but they don't have storage for any of it. Um, if I had to do it all over again, and I've been thinking about getting rid of all my dust extractors and getting all brand new middies because they have the hose storage, but it's still not like big enough. No, it's barely, barely enough room. Yeah, and that's so frustrating because that's not efficient. Yeah, just sit oh. there and like, yeah. So, um, 